What is up guys, my name is Kagernaut, but just call me Keg, and in this video today, I'm actually going to be telling you what has just dropped with patch 7.1.5 that was announced at BlizzCon today for Legion. Now, uh, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff, and I'm really excited to tell you guys about it, and I'm really, really stoked for all the new changes that's going to happen very, very soon. Um, and really, like, I, guys, there's so much stuff. All right, so uh, first and foremost, with patch 7.1.5, there's going to be some new class changes. Now, there have been a lot of hot fixes already, such as uh, Prot Warriors uh, Ignore Pain nerf and some other things like uh, Demon Hunter Mastery. But really, this is the first opportunity that Blizzard is taking in patch 7.1.5 to make some really sweeping class changes like really crazy ones and for example I'll, I'll give you some examples uh, soon but like really they're going to go and they have a lot of data from uh, dungeons from mythic plus from raids and also from pvp that they're going to use to try and justify what they what is it is exactly that they're going to change are they going to change some uh, secondary stats are going to change some talents and they really wanted to focus on um looking at the new talents and everything else that people are using and trying to figure out what is what and what is good now um they did talk about some of the talent reworks uh, there have been some talents that are really underperforming obviously and there have been some talents where literally everybody is taking because it's just too good and there's no other reason to take a different talent now either that's something wrong with the talent tier as a whole maybe the other two talents aren't that great or possibly they actually mentioned that Maybe if that talent is so good, then it possibly just might be baked into the spec as a whole. So for instance, if we had something like Fellblade on the Demon Hunters be not like almost 98% of Demon Hunters were taking Fellblade, they might just put it straight into the class as a whole and just have Fellblade a straight up ability that we have and then fill that Fellblade gap with a different talent. Obviously, that's not going to happen because Fellblade is a high contender with the other two that are available on that row. But for instance, something like Fell Eruption is not that great. They might get rid of it or they might rework it. Now, they also wanted to change something with the secondary stats. They really wanted to emphasize that eye level is king when it comes to upgrading um, pieces of gear. I talked about this a little bit in the patch 7.1 changes when I was talking about the Brewmaster and their armor buff. But... Really, I was also concerned with the secondary stats, and Blizzard has heard that, and Blizzard is understanding that there are some times where you have an 895 piece, and you're going to replace your 835 piece, but it doesn't have crit on it. For instance, Fire Mages will not take that 895 piece because it does not have crit. Even if it's adding like something 400 intellect, it's just not worth it because the crit is too good. So they're going to address some of the issues like that and really wanted to narrow the gap between the power of the secondary stats. So we might see some changes for uh, Critical Strike for a Guardian Druid, for instance, because it just does nothing for us. It's complete garbage. So that was something that they really wanted to address as well. And also they had a lot of concerns with the feel and more or less rotation of some of the specs. And they might address some issues with that, maybe something like a global cooldown. Or they might actually change some of the actual just cooldown numbers on some of the abilities that some specs already have baked into them. They might get some other stuff. They might add some different things. I'm not sure, but they really wanted to make each spec feel more unique and feel better. And they also said that some of the utility that they removed and added in Legion was actually a bit of a mistake. So for instance, they removed traps for hunters from Marksman and Beast Mastery and only left it to survival. But they felt that was a mistake because now hunters no longer feel like hunters if not everything is available for a trap. So they're going to add traps back to all three specs and something like Cloak of Concealment for rogues, I believe. Uh, that is coming back too. I think that is the, the AoE stealth that rogues can give for their entire party. That'll be something really cool also, especially for Mythic Plus dungeons where you don't have to use an invis pop. Additionally, there's also some new changes coming in with dungeons. So they're actually going to be adding Mr. Pandaria time walking dungeons into the game. It's actually uh, been a little bit. It's been, uh, we've had World Warlords of Draenor and now we have Legion. That is probably the right amount of time that we're going to have to have in order to get Mr. Pandaria time walking. And they felt that too. So now that's going to be ba added back into uh, patch 7.1.5. Additionally, there's probably going to be some new uh, cosmetic stuff like uh, some armor and also possibly even a new mount they have the dragon hawk mount for bc time walking they also have the horse mount for 
uh, Lich King time walking. I'm not sure if they have one for Cataclysm, but r I really, really hope that they add one for Mists of Pandaria because I like a lot of the art style available back in MOP, and I really hope that they make a new mount from that. Possibly even a new uh, Flying Dragon? I don't remember. But one of those uh, Heavenly Dragon mounts would be really nice, especially a maybe a red one. No, no, they already have a red one. I'm not sure. Heavenly Green one. That sounds good. Add that in, please. All right. Now, also, there's going to be more content with the Brawler's Guild. Brawler's Guild has had a major rework. Last time it was re, uh, re-put into the game, it was just a tuning change and they switched around some of the bosses. But now they're going to add dozens of new bosses, guys. I'm talking, like, seriously, dozens of new bosses. Not just about 15 or whatever uh, that there was last time. There's going to be a ton of new ones. And there's also going to be a really cool thing. Uh, every time a new... Uh, encounter is started, a new player starts an encounter, there's a small RNG chance that it actually turns into more or less a raid encounter. And what, when that happens, it's going to suck or, or pull everybody into the room onto the arena that is fighting. They're going to pull them in there and all of the players have to work together to defeat this raid encounter. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to go down, but that sounds really exciting. The Brawler's Guild was something that I really, really liked. There's going to be a lot more cosmetics, such as shirts and a new mount available from the Brawler's Guild, something called the Rock Spine Basilisk. And also, they liked how uh, players were kind of like helping out people with uh, respawns when they're, when they're trying to res people or giving them buffs before they actually go in to fight. So they're going to have a new currency available for the Brawler's Guild, which actually allows buffs to be shared across all the people inside the Brawler's Guild room. For instance, there's probably going to be a much closer um, graveyard, so we don't have to go and fly back all the way over and, and re-instance ourselves back into the Brawler's Guild. We'll just have probably a graveyard like literally right outside the place and just walk back in. Or they might have something where everybody gets 5% more of their main stat. Who knows? That sounds really exciting, and I'm really looking forward to things like that. They're also adding micro-holidays. And micro-holidays, they said, were supposed to act more like holidays for the NPCs in the real world. The examples that they gave were something like a Volunteer Guard Day and Encourage Remembrance Day. And what these are supposed to act like for Volunteer Guard Day, the players can go up and play sort of like a mini-game where they act like a guard for a few minutes or possibly even an hour, I'm not sure. And they go and just basically patrol around the streets and then try and stop people who are uh, committing a robbery or... or killing off a, a thing like I don't know but the, the, the goal of the players is to actually stop that from happening and really there's no currency attached there's no mount there's no pet nothing it's just a fun little thing to make the game world feel a bit more alive and for instance a really cool thing with the Encourage Remembrance Day is that players are going to get to go back over to Silithith <laughs> excuse me Silithus where Encourage was actually opened and there's going to be some uh, either dailies or world quests or, or something over there that the players are going to get to uh, acquire a new currency and actually spend that or put or dump points into a jar or I don't even know but the idea is to have the Alliance and the Horde fight to see who can put the most points into a jar or something and then the winning faction is actually going to have their faction's banner hung across the gates of Ankaraj for the entire year. And I think how it's going to work is it's either going to be a worldwide thing where the entire alliance and the entire horde is actually going to fight each other and try and see whose banner can get hung up, or it's going to be more of a regional thing where we have the U.S. fighting on their side, we have the EU uh, Asian servers and also Oceanic servers all fighting to see whose faction's banner can be hung across the Ankaraj gates for the entire year. And that's basically it, everybody. Actually, no. I actually... Well, hold on, hold on. I forgot something. So, there's going to be a new uh, alt catch-up mechanic. Uh, it's not particularly new, but basically what they wanted to do is they wanted to address the problem with artifact knowledge. They didn't want to make it account-bound because that was... Just, oh, that's just too much of a step forward, guys. No, they didn't want to make artifact knowledge account-bound. What they're actually going to do is they're going to allow you to just straight up buy artifact research notes like almost immediately up to a certain point. So let's say by the time 7.1.5 rolls around, most of the people that got to level 110 within the first week, everybody is sitting at around rank 15 on their artifact knowledge, let's say. Well, if you're making an alt now, then you'll just be able to 
straight up buy artifact notes, let's say for 500 resources like they are now, you just buy an artifact note up to, let's say, rank 10. And then that means that uh, you still have to play your character and progress in the world content and doing world stuff and trying to get garrison resources, well, order hall resources actually, you're going to acquire those and then spend those on those notes so that you'll be able to immediately get into the content that you're going to want on an alt. So for instance, I've had my monk leveled up to 110 for a couple weeks now, but I'm still, I think I just got a new note today, which hit me at the, um, I believe 450% extra artifact knowledge right now. And that is a huge disadvantage for me, I would think, because for instance, my druid has 1400% artifact knowledge gains while my monk only has 475 I believe like I just said that's that's not enough everybody I I think that this new catch-up mechanic is gonna be a lot better they already halved the time for the missions to complete when you're actually trying to get your third relic they made those missions from eight hours or 12 hours to four and six hours so um, that shouldn't be too bad. They're taking steps in the right direction to address the problem with having alts in Legion. And I'm really, really excited because I cannot wait to be able to level my shaman because I just, I really, really, am, I'm really excited. So I believe that's all the information that I have for patch 7.1.5. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like, please leave a comment and please subscribe for more stuff. I'm going to have a patch 7.2 video coming out soon and also a patch 7.1.5 wish list on all the talents and all the artifact uh, traits that I'm going to want to see change with this new patch. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.